Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tartlecast. You are here with Alexander McKeg and Jason Rigby, your favorite or least favorite host. Doesn't really matter. But we want to talk about some new data that came in from a study on groundwater. And I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's worth checking out. Jason, you want to go over the title on this thing here and we can uh, chat? Yes, we pump so much groundwater that we've nudged the Earth's spin. Okay. So the Earth, for you, for those of you out there, it sits on this rotating axis, right? And we just we spin around it. It's got a little bit of a wobble called a precession in it, but it's it's relatively stable. Now, when you move mass around on an object, it becomes out of balance, right? If I'm heavy on one leg, I could trip, right? But it, if I'm spinning this big thing and I've moved a lot of the weight that's on the surface to a place it shouldn't be, it's going to throw off that angle of tilt that it's always been rotating off of. It's going to shift it because it's now heavier in one direction. What does that mean for us? Not good stuff. Because now your angle, which the sun, which is coming and hitting the earth, right? And you know how light hits specific areas. It's going to change vegetation. It's going to change the tidal pulls. You know, it's not going to be good how the earth gets squeezed with specific gravities coming from the outside of it. And so when, when was this released? This, uh, this uh, June 15th, 2023. Great. Absolutely awesome. And this came from two very large um, scientific groups, uh, some out of NASA and the other were out of... Yeah, it's agu.org. AGU. Uh, AGU it's a global much. community supporting more than a half million advocates and professionals in Earth and space sciences. Great. So AGU had published this. Now, many scientists were curious for a while... Why the one sea levels were rising at an accelerated rate beyond what ice melt was showing, and then two, why there was a drift in the Earth's rotational center, right up at the poles. Like, what's going on with that? Yeah, and this was this this data was done in decades. Yeah, this Two is decades, right? Tons and tons and tons of research over many years to figure it out, and they finally figured out what the direct correlation was. And it was human beings pumping out the groundwater. And the data is showing that as the population is increasing and there are people who have more material wants and we have larger commercial structures that are getting built, we're pulling more of that water out of these storage areas underneath the crust and shifting it around and being used in you know commercial or residential aspects. And then where does it go after that? basic sewer drainage, and then back out to the ocean at the end of the day, not back into the aquifers to balance out the waste or ballast if you're in the shipping industry to keep your things afloat properly. Okay. And Jason, how many, <laughs> how <laughs> much water are has we been talking? pumped? Yeah. How much? 2,150 gigatons in of so groundwater. A gigaton. And to give you context for what that is, that's four quadrillion pounds of water. It's insane. And it's so much water that has been so stationary for so long in the natural cycle and flow that the data is now completely out of whack for what our normal cycles are. And it's showing where we're actually headed into. And we're continuing to pump more and more of that groundwater. Yeah, because you, you think they're trapped off groovers. So. Yeah, and that's where they are. And so it's, it's a natural static balance that was in place that we've completely disheveled. Yeah, and this is crazy what they say here. Um, based on climate models, scientists previously estimated humans pump 2,150 gigatons, which we talked about, equivalent to more than six millimeters or 0.24 inches of sea level rise. A quarter of an inch. How massive are the seas? The seas are huge. <laughs> they cover so to make them rise. A quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch, and it covers 80% of the world, right? Yeah, so if you think about that mass of water, and then what happens when you get violent storms? Mm -hmm. It has a whole extra quarter inch of volume for the storm to use that it otherwise didn't have. Well, what happens when you have water pollution? Oh, man. That's the part that gets me. That's the part, the, min the minute that I was reading this and we were discussing this, I was thinking, so you're taking a perfectly clean, for the most part, I, I don't know what percentage of aquifers are, are, you know, toxic or whatever. There may be like different types of. Who knows uh, what's in them? Yeah. I know. Yeah. And I know like bacteria and stuff can be. So mm -hmm. You have to be careful, especially in like well drilling and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but you take that stagnant water that's sitting in there and then you turn around and you, you, and we use it and then it has to go to the filters of human consumption, 
Yep. And then that byproduct coming out is what? Well, it's full of pharmaceuticals. Yeah, and then that just gets dumped into the oceans further. So Human waste, I mean, the list goes on and on. It's not the groundwater issue here, which the data is showing us. It's one, we've, we've thrown off the tilt to the earth. Mm -hmm. That's a huge problem. It's a ton of water. We're contributing to the rise in the oceans because of our commercial activity. And we're also putting a bunch of toxic chemicals in at the same time that otherwise weren't there. That's, that's not good. That's crazy that it not just changed the sea level that much, but I, I picture like those old school metal tops from back in the day. And now what if that top though, what if you put a little bit of extra weight on? Well, that's side? what I was thinking. Like, Woo. like if you took a little tiny piece of lead, mm -hmm. you know, we used to have that and you could just like tape it onto one side. You look like someone that would play with lead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's probably my problem. <laughs> <laughs> we had lead gasoline back in the day too. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, right. Well, that's what they were saying was like, um, like, uh, what was that Roman emperor that was crazy? And that actually people were having lead, things made out of lead, uh, and they were consuming lead. And the the elites, the emperors and, and those mm -hmm. people around were all consuming that. The poor people didn't have the goblets and the – Oh, yeah, like all the fancy things to drink out of. Yeah, and so they were actually like – it's like having a top hat back in London early in yes, the day. Yes, 100%. Oh, there's a lot of methylmercury in my system. Yeah, this is interesting. Listen to this part. The model only matched the observed polar drift once the researchers <clears throat> included 2,150 gigatons of groundwater redistribution. Mm -hmm. Without it, the model was off 78.5 centimeters. Now, this is between 1993 and 2010. It's huge. So, so 78.5 centimeters for us here in America is 31 inches. So you have almost three feet of change. That's and I crazy. know I know that doesn't seem significant. People think, oh, it's just three feet. It doesn't matter. Well, if you look at the data of what three feet do over time, if you move a degree mm. in your directional heading and you do that for a long distance, you could be so far off of your original course. But now we're talking about almost three feet. It's a significant change. And the data here is just, frankly, it's a little frightening. Yeah. And it said that most water was redistributed in, of course, Western North America and Northwestern India. Mm -hmm. both at mid latitudes. So, so when we talk about putting the weight on the top, that's what we're, that's where we're putting it at. Yeah. We're literally, if the top could look like a globe. We're taking it out of the, the secured comfort area of the earth. It's orbit right. around its core and then moving it up to higher points. And it's really throwing off its wobble. Yeah. It's so crazy. The next step for this research could be looking to the past. Observing changes in earth rotational pole is useful for understanding continent scale water storage variations. Mm -hmm. Because water shifts underneath aquifers naturally. But the data here is showing that we're actually shifting that synthetically, which is not. This is really not good. It's at, it's out of the the natural rhythms which the planet is moving itself through. And in order for us to fix this, the amount of decades we have been pumping significant amounts of groundwater, we have to find a new option of not doing that and reducing it over a many multi-decade plan to allow those aquifers to build back up and hopefully it moves back into its natural cycle. Probability of that, I'm going to say is zero. Yeah, unless we get into, what is it, desalination or whatever, where we're taking that extra water, cleaning it. Desalination. Yeah, desalination, yeah. And then taking that. And pumping it back in. Yeah, it'd have to be something like that. Which would require probably like huge fusion plants to ton of energy to desalinate that much water. Well, four asked, quadrillion pounds. I asked four different AI systems, and all four of them said, "Get rid of humans." <laughs> <Not teasing. laughs> That's where it's going to go. <laughs> it's uh, you want to solve your water problems. You yeah, want to solve all your pollution. It, makes, it goes right back pull, down. To if you pulled, I, I always like to do these models in my head. It's so fun. But if you pull humans out, how long do you think Earth would take to get back to an equilibrium of of health? Seven to ten. Yeah, it's really quick. Having zero impact on They it. did that, and it was really interesting. They've done with you coral reefs. This. Yes. In Florida, they did that with not having certain areas where you can't fish. Yeah, they reduced the fisheries over in the, the, the coral regions, and in a seven-year time, it was back to full growth, full health. So can we pause humans for seven years? I don't know. Just can put we? us on pause or put us in those pods where we can sleep? Can, yeah, can we do a seven-year pause? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, you heard the data. NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory and AGU just recently released this, and it is worth checking out. Yeah, they even have. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, they even got the mapping to show you where it's actually headed, where they had estimated it, and where it currently is today. And with that being said, thank you very much for joining us today on TCAST.